Bone cement is uh, typically one of the highest yield topics in the FRCS examination and it is very commonly asked, particularly in the basic sciences viva. You should at the very least be able to talk about it for five minutes and when you talk about it, think of it in terms of its composition, its properties and its uses. And it's also fair game that the examiner asks you about the different phases of uh, bone cement from mixing all the way uh, to setting and there's a nice diagram at the end uh, of this video which I'll explain how to draw. So what is bone cement? So in its most basic form it's polymethyl methacrylate which is a man-made acrylic which composes of a liquid monomer and a powdered polymer. Now these components are mixed together which causes an exothermic reaction uh, to reach your final product. The final product is used as a grout, not an adhesive, and is used to interdigitate with a trabecular bone under pressure, and it does not form covalent bonds to its surrounding structures. Its properties are that it's strongest in compression, it's weakest in tension, and moderate in shear, which reflects its advantages in taper slip femoral stem designs of, of hip replacements. It also exhibits viscoelastic properties, uh, and the examiner may also ask you to draw the graphs for the four different types of viscoelastic property, which includes creep, hysteresis, uh, strain, uh, rate dependent strain, uh, and also stress relaxation, which is all explained in another video. So going on to uh, its composition. So when I think about the liquid and the powder, uh, I've come up with misc or miscellaneous uh, poca, P-O-C-A, and if you uh, search on the internet what poca stands for, it actually stands for proceeds of crime acts, which, uh, I mean, this is the way that I remember it anyway. So first of all, the liquid. So the liquid is a monomer, so it's, it's formed of a uh, methyl methacrylate monomer. The I is an initiator, uh, which in this case is NN dimethyl P toluidine. Uh, there's no easy way to remember that apart from that it's used in, in, in dynamite, TNT. Uh, this, the S stands for a stabilizer. And this is hydroquinone. And the C is your colorant. So you can see uh, what color your cement is from its surrounding tissues. And in, in the liquid, uh, chlorophyll is used. Um, in the powder, you have your polymer. So you have your polymer, which is your polymethyl methacrylate. So that's your polymer. Uh, the O is for your opacifier. And this can commonly be uh, either a barium sulfate or a zirconium dioxide. Uh, so this is so that it shows up on radiographs. Uh, the C stands for a catalyst. Uh, and this, and in this case, it's a benzoyl peroxide. Uh, in some books, it mentions that the catalyst is actually in the liquid, but uh, but actually, it's it's more commonly in the powder. The benzoyl peroxide is more commonly found in the powder. Uh, so, for example, in Palacos, which is a a brand name of cement that we commonly use, the benzoyl peroxide is actually in the powder. Uh, a is your antibiotics and commonly antibiotics have to be uh, heat stable and they have to uh, be able to uh, reach uh, a local therapeutic um, uh, concentration and most commonly we use gentamicin or vanc vancomycin. So this is the composition you need to know at the very basic level. So beyond this you can talk about the different phases of 
bone cement as it undergoes once it is mixed. So for this, you can draw a graph and on the x-axis you have the time, which is measured in seconds, and on the y-axis you have the temperature, which is measured in degrees Celsius. At the bottom here you have zero degrees and zero time. So this is exactly where, you, where your scrub nurse starts mixing. Half here you have 50 degrees, up here you have 100 degrees, and the, probably the most important time point is around the 10 minute mark when the cement starts to set. Half of that would be 300 seconds and up here we'll have 900 seconds. So there are three temperatures that you need to know about. First of all, approximately at 21 degrees is your ambient temperature of your cement, which is labeled T-AMB. T-MAX is the maximal temperature that your cement will reach, which is around 93 degrees. And your setting time of your cement is determined by uh, the, the temperature that your cement reaches, uh, which is half that of your, of your curing. So half of the difference between Tmax and uh, Tamb would be your setting temperature of your cement. So T set would be around 57 degrees. So from here, you can start to populate your graph. You know that your cement will start to set at approximately 57 degrees here and you know that it will start to set at around 10 or 11 minutes. So it will start off with an ambient temperature and then it will quite rapidly rise all the way to the set point. And then it will continue to rise to its maximal temperature at 93 degrees and then over the course of time it will gradually stabilize again back to the ambient temperature and it will continue to harden and cure and reach its maximal strength, strength at 24 hours. So from here, you can start to label your graph. So you know that this point here is your setting time of your, of your cement. So this distance or this time here from there to there is your setting time. Uh, you also know that you have a mixing time. So as soon as your liquid and powder components are put together by your scrub nurse, uh, the manufacturers typically tell you to start uh, to, to mix, usually under a vacuum, for 30 seconds. So from zero to 30 is your, is your mixing phase. And when the components are started to mix together, they, they kind of almost form like a sandy material as the powder hits the liquid. So this is also known as your sandy phase. From, from zero all the way to the time uh, at which the cement uh, stops sticking to a dry surgical glove, that's called the dough time or the doughy phase. And that typically lasts about two minutes or so, so 120 seconds. Um, so that's the time when it starts to, when your scrub nurse starts to mix all the way to when the time it takes to stop sticking to a surgical glove. So that is known as the doughy phase. And we already know the setting time is the time from when it starts mixing all the way to the time it takes for the cement to reach half of its maximal temperature. And the difference between the setting time and the doughy phase is termed your working phase. So this is the time that allows the surgeon to actually uh, work with the cement. And beyond, beyond the setting time, you know that it takes up to 24 hours for the cement to reach um, its maximal strength. 